Hey man, all right. So I've been I've been weapons carrying for a year now, and uh, what what have I learned? What have I figured out? Allow me to preface this statement by saying I know I'm no expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm not here to tell you how to. Sometimes I'm here to tell you how not to. I'm just telling you what I've kind of figured out over the last year. Uh, so I started. I'm against carry licenses, right? Well, concealed carry, weapons carry licenses, any of them. I'm actually against any gun restriction. I think if a felon's out of jail, he should be fine to carry a weapon. That being said, I did get a weapons carry license uh, back when the religion of peace was driving trucks through crowds again for, for a period. And I said it was just time to have something on me. Uh, and uh, I, sh I maybe talked about that with you guys back then a little bit. So uh, if you remember, if you watched that video, I don't remember how much I told you about in that video. I was I was carrying at that time uh, a, a full-size 4-inch 357 Magnum revolver, a, an old Ruger Security 6. I uh, love it. It's a great revolver. I had a buddy at the time, and I was carrying it in a, in a homemade holster. And I'll show you a little bit about that here in a minute. I had a buddy at the time who sniffs a lot of paint. He sniffs a lot of paint. Uh, and it has affected his, his brain cells. But he had some good points at the time. You know, he talked about that, 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 that revolver being way too big, way too heavy, way too hard to conceal. And he said, you'll end up not carrying it. You know, you'll, you'll have this giant revolver, and, and it'll just be too easy for you to decide to leave it behind. Uh, and he had some very, very valid points. Uh, however, that, that has not turned out to be the case. I, I carry that revolver uh, frequently. I don't carry every day, everywhere. But if I'm with the family, some member of the family or whatnot, I, I have a pistol on me. And, and it's almost all, it's very, very frequently that 357 Magnum revolver. I'm carrying it right now. Uh, some of you maybe noticed. It is not incredibly easy to conceal. But it's it's you can generate what the, what they call somebody else's problem field, an SEP field. You know you can make it so that people can choose to ignore it, uh, and, and and fairly easy. This is really representative of how I dress. Uh, I even in the summer I'll have blue jeans. I'll usually have a t-shirt under a t-shirt. Uh, not always, but usually. So I'm able to have uh, I'm able to have a shirt down over it enough that uh, you can choose to ignore it if you want. Uh, there's a few problems. Not, not problems, you know, I like open carry, uh, and mo most people don't, they say it makes you a target, and it gives people a chance to sneak up behind you and steal your pistol and everything, and I am, uh, I am susceptible to that argument, sorry, uh, I don't, I, I think the, uh, the, the advantages of the deterrent of, of someone knowing you have a pistol outweighs the danger of someone targeting you because of that pistol. I think the vast majority of people in most situations who you have to worry about would see that pistol and decide that there were easier marks or easier places to, to do their nefarious deeds. However, someone coming up from behind and, and ganking that pistol really, really worries me. Uh, let me show you this rig real quick. Uh, it's a old, just an old belt someone gave me when I was in the Marine Corps. Hey, shh, you're okay, baby. She just tripped. <laughs> Landed in a pile of leaves. Uh, so it's an old tactical belt. Someone just gave me a new one. Uh, a tan one that's in better shape so and it may be thicker so I'm going to experiment maybe with switching out this belt however I don't know how well that tan is going to go with my homemade holster uh, the homemade holster is actually just made out of some old uh, an old cowboy boot uh, I have a job I work uh, but because of uh, issues outside of our control we have some financial liabilities and obligations I mean there's not a whole lot of free cash washing around here so when I started this, I had to make a holster, and I made it out of an old cowboy boot. Uh, and I'd never done anything like this before. It works. It is shockingly effective. I don't know if you can see. Here's the that's the top of a, like the shaft of the cowboy boot, and here's the back side of the top of the shaft. And uh, uh, the, there's the little tabs on the side to pull them up with. I was really proud of it. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of ugly. It's kind of silly, but but I like it. But it's effective. It works. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when I took it off, I don't put the belt through the belt loops. Uh, that I did that at first and it would just pull my pants down. Now I just kind of sling the belt, gun, gunfighter style sort of, I mean I keep it up high, I don't have it way down here, but I sort of sling it gunfighter style and that has proven to be the most comfortable. Uh, the only downside is that occasionally if I bend over, the belt will pull above my, my waistband. But for every other purposes, having that, that belt just slung is uh, far more effective. I have this retainer strap in. On the holster uh, right now it's loosened up a little bit or stretched maybe when I first made it I could turn the, the pistol upside down and it wouldn't fall out 
and it still will do that if I put the strap back where it's supposed to be but it has loosened up and it, it doesn't sit where it's supposed to it kind of sits down here if you try to pull it like backwards it won't come out but if someone pulled it straight up it would which is what it was how I originally designed it to be but it's just <laughs> kids are trying to uh, the, the tolerances it's just the weather has stressed a little bit and so it doesn't work quite as well as it did if you just came behind me and tried to pull it back like that you wouldn't get it but if you if you pulled it straight up you would which is what it's supposed to do like I said but it's just gotten a little too easier it's just moved backwards a little bit over the time but I carry this usually I've carried this rig I know for eight hours more than eight hours a day I've carried it while traveling this works it's effective this is a big heavy revolver uh, it needs to be cleaned uh, sorry it had some pollen on it <laughs> it's a big heavy revolver uh, it's solid it's uh, it's effective it's simple it works uh, I right now I've got a too hot of a load in there I've decided I need to, to downsize this is a, is a federal, I think it came in an American Eagle box though. That's 158 grain, semi-jacketed, soft point, and I think it's moving at like 1,240 feet per second. Don't quote me on that, I, that's what I remember. And follow-up shots are just, oh, you know, th th this thing's got a kick to it. Not that it's uncomfortable or unmanageable, but follow-up shots I think are harder than they need to be. Or I don't shoot enough, which, well, I don't shoot enough. I don't, I don't shoot enough. But I think, you know, maybe my, uh, my lack of shooting would be mitigated a little bit if I fired a, a slightly softer round, so maybe 125 grain moving at that same speed or something. I don't know. Uh, so this is what I usually carry. This is not what I exclusively carry, though. Sometimes when I do want to do a little bit more of a concealment, I borrow Mariah's Ruger EC9S, and I use a Black Hawk holster. I still just carry it on the side. Uh, I just in you know, like normal. I don't know why I'm demonstrating this. Y'all know what it was with the shirt down over it. Uh, I, I prefer uh, open carry, but I don't mind concealing a little bit. Like I said, just generate a somebody else's problem field. What I have learned though is that I really want a, uh, a lock on these things. You know, those that little paddle or level you push so you can pull it out. Uh, I've decided that's important to me. And uh, even if it slows you down, you know, you're getting it out to use. I, I, that that peace of mind is would be important to me. So. In the future, I'll be looking for a a, hol a, pist a, a holster with that, you know what I'm talking about, that little button you depress so that you can pull it out. Uh, I like this I like this little Ruger. It's really slim. It, it conceals well. I have to put it in my pocket before. Uh, it's not ideal, but it works. The only other thing I've really tried at this point... I started off, I, now this isn't my holster, it's not for me to carry, but it was an inside the waistband, and I just experimented with it a little bit, and I hated it. I mean, I hated it. And it's not the holster, it's just what the holster does. It, it, you're not concealed. If what you're wanting to do is conceal carry, to me it just feels like that, that change in your waistline is so obvious, even, even with that, it's a little bit extra. It doesn't, it just seems too obvious to me, or it was uncomfortable, I didn't like it. Uh, I did, like, for one time, for like 20 minutes, put it in an appendix carry, and it, it conceals nice, but everything else about that just ugh, it just feels wrong. And when you sit down, I don't like it at all. So I didn't even try. I didn't even leave the house with an appendix carry. Uh, that being said, uh, I don't have a problem with that big, with that big heavy pistol. It carries just fine for me. I probably will sometime in the future switch to a semi-automatic. Uh, and not because I feel like it's necessary. Uh, this revolver will do everything most of us would ever need in the civilian involved shooting. The, the things I've heard and read are, of course, all anecdotal, and they don't come from me. I think In Range TV talked about it once, and I've heard Paul Harrell talk about it. You know, it's like three seconds, three trigger pulls is what you get in a citizen involved shooting, anecdotally. So a revolver would, would more than do that, and, uh, you know, there's all the advantages of the revolver. However, uh, I, I'm not sure why at this point I wouldn't switch to a semi-auto. Just because it, it does have more capabilities, and if those capabilities aren't going to cost me anything in carryability, uh, you know, and, and convenience and everything, why give them up? Uh, as much as I like my revolvers, as much as I'm an iconoclast, uh, I actually, when I first started to carry, I went to get a semi-automatic pistol. I had a revolver that I started trading, and I ended up with a uh, Sig Sauer P2022, 
I think that's what it's called. It was the French service pistol at the time. Really nice pistol, but I had just had an accident at work. Let me see if we can show folks this. I had cut myself on my wrist because my boyfriend broke up with me. No, I just had a, an accident with a sheet of metal. Uh, someone's going to say, that's not funny. It's a little funny. Anyway, and so I had I had problems with these two two lower fingers. They weren't they weren't working right. And I was having a lot of limp wrist jams, or a lot of jams that I attributed to limp wristing because of my two fingers. And almost all of you know what limp wristing is, but let me tell you real quick, just in case you don't. You know, when you, you fire a semi-automatic, a portion of the energy of the, the cartridge going off is used to, to, usually from blowback, to throw the slide back. And then come, it comes forward, gets another, another round, and it's ready to fire again. But that, that slide has to travel all the way backwards and all the way forwards. Well, if you're limp wristing, the gun is moving back in your hand. And uh, so the slides, the slide's not moving as, as far as it needs to relative to the frame. And the slide has to move relative to the frame, so the frame has to be still. And I was having a bunch of jams, and I was attributing it to this, this hand being cut. So I traded that SIG for that, that Ruger revolver, which really is what I wanted anyway. I'm a revolver guy. I love the 357. I was, I was going after the semi-automatic under protest because I felt like I needed the you know, tactical capabilities. And I was really pretty pleased when I had an excuse to trade to the revolver. I am now think, uh, I, I, I probably will never not carry that sum, but at some point in the future, I'll probably switch to a full-size semi-automatic. In the past, I really loved the Baby Eagle. They call it the Jericho now. Uh, I like the, the, the steel frame. I just like a steel frame revolver, a uh, steel frame pistol, <laughs> listen to me. Uh, I'm a Ruger fanboy though, so there's a good chance that I might end up with a Security 9, and yes, I know it's a polymer, but it's really affordable, and it shares magazines with that PC9 carbine. That's all stuff down in the future. Uh, but the big thing I want to want is just a, a holster that locks the pistol in. Uh, I, I think that's, that, that's the one thing I really want right now. I am a proponent of open carry, even though I know it's not, you know, they say it's not tactical, which I think is stupid. If it wasn't tactical, then you know the military and the cops wouldn't carry that way. Don't tell me it's not tactical. What you're telling me is that it's not practical, or that there's there's downsides to the tactical. Because tactical is what 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 in the moment is the easiest thing to get rounds on target, and that's obviously going to be open carry. I like open carry because it's making a statement, a public statement about who I am as a man and and what I believe my role is as a man. And I think open carry, just like in the old days, you know, nobles used to carry little useless swords, just to 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 demonstrate their authority and, and their position and role in society, I, I think a, a pistol is, does that for a man these days. And uh, I don't care if you're carrying a flintlock pistol, a set of old dueling pistols. Uh, I, I think if you're doing anything like that, you're, you're, you're fulfilling a part of your function and, and a part of your role, and you're advertising who you are as a man. Uh, you are responsible for the safety and security and the freedoms of your family. Your faith, family, freedoms. I haven't figured out how I'm going to work that into a video yet, but the three Fs, faith, family, freedoms. Uh, we're going to talk about that more in the future. Uh, I think oh, I think the the uh, the deterrence of open carry, the philosophical statement of open carry, far outweighs the, uh, the risks of open carry of someone targeting you because you have a, a pistol or going after your pistol first. Uh, I, I think the vast majority of people, if they saw an armed man, they are going to decide to look for an easier target. Uh, and I think there's ways to mitigate that risk of them getting your pistol from behind. Uh, but that's just me at this stage. Uh, like I said, I'm nobody's expert. Uh, I do believe, I am, I am very, very satisfied now that I'm carrying. I think every man should carry. I think most women should carry. Uh, always I find my wife has a pistol. Uh, but, but there you go. I am not sold on this idea of deep concealed carry that you've got to have really expensive holsters. Be nice if you could. Uh, you know, expensive clothes specifically designed for, for carry. You could spend more money on carrying the pistol than you did on buying the pistol. Especially if you, you know, like this was, I think after we bought this one, we found one brand new for 217 I think we paid 240 for this one. You know, when you pay $240 for a, a pistol that you can rely on, we live in a golden age of firearms. Uh, but there we go. I still carry that, that big revolver. I carry it a lot. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, did I show my strip? Uh, frequently when I, uh, I carry it, no, when I carry that, I usually have this strip. It's made for a Smith & Wesson, a, a seven round shot Smith & Wesson. Uh, this was given to me by a guy named Michael. We appreciate you, Michael. And so I usually carry this. I shot 
all but seven rounds yesterday when I was doing a little bit of shooting. So I have to go get some more extra ammo. Uh, but I don't think you're, I, I don't feel like I'm at a disadvantage with that 357 with seven extra shots uh, for everyday carry. Now, obviously, if they said, Zach, you're going to war, you know, I mean, that's, I'm not taking a pistol anyway. I'm taking my rifle and extra ammo. You know, that, that couple of pounds of the pistol, I think, not that there's no use for a pistol, but I think the, the advantages of, of the pistol don't outweigh the advantages of having extra ammo for your rifle. Your pistol is to get you to your rifle. Uh, so there you go, man. Hey, we appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. You guys almost always have better ideas than me. Uh, so I'm sure I'll, I'll get some good, uh, uh, some good info out of the, the comments. Like I said, this is just what I'm doing now. My preferences I've learned so far. I'm only a year in. Who knows what will happen in, in the future, especially if I decide to add a semi-automatic pistol at some point. Uh, there you go. Anyway, we do appreciate you, man. Thank you.